but we do a little math to it. And this is some trigonometry stuff. Um, but you do tangent FOV divided by 2, and make sure you have spaces between that those uh, math functions, or else it doesn't really understand it, and multiply it by, we're not sure what we're going to multiply it by. Um, I'm going to start with 30. Um, now we're not going to see that table of this to our expression. So I'm going to click OK. Scale. Expression. Ref expression. And there now we have our reference movie and it stays in place even though the camera zooms in and out. Now all we have to do to really line it up is change that multiplier in our expression. Um, I'm sorry this is so complicated. <laughs> I wish there was a, a quicker way but I'm doing something that I have not been able to do and I've wanted to be able to do <laughs> in Toon Boom for so long. So I found the magic number here is 55. La 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 la. And what's really fun to look at is the perspective view. You can move around and view the camera cone. And it's like watching a, uh, a movie projector. <laughs> and you see as it closes in on its frame of view, the QuickTime reduces in size, but it's almost as if the reference doesn't move an inch. So that's very fun, very interesting. Okay, let's go back. Oh, I've turned the camera peg off. Now that we turn it on, we still see everything normally, but in perspective view, everything is moving all over the place. Oh, it's fun and crazy, isn't it? So now we have our second locator. Let's see where this locator lands when we highlight it and we see that it is correctly staying right in the center of that sphere. And that's great. That's just what we wanted. Now we've attached the the uh, location to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little drawing and hook it into there on my grid. Turn the paintbrush on, and now I'm going to turn on my grid. Oh, I can't. Oh, dear. Oh, wow, this is really getting slow. <laughs> uh, let's try this again. View grid. It's not letting me. Anyhow, well, I'm going to paint something here. I'll paint uh, just a, a circle right now. And that drawing is under that peg. That drawing does not need... Let's see. I may have to adjust the placement and size of that drawing. Let's see where that drawing lands in 3D view. Oh, we don't see it, do we? Oh, because it only exists for one frame. So i got to extend that out here. And ta -da, there we have that drawing that we see. And we see it's living in the correct space. But it's not centered quite correctly. It's just too big. I'm going to unify it, scale, scale it down. This is why you attach all your information, rotation, location information to a peg, because you're going to need to uh, make up for some offset uh, for your drawing. Let's make this uh, 0.1. Or, you know, I could keep it at, say, 0.5 and just shrink the actual drawing way down. And hey, look, I just moved it over so that it matches with that sphere. And look, it's totally in line with it. But of course, you can see that it looks like a card. So what I'm going to do is attach that rotation that I've imported. Um, where is that? Did I not bring in... Oh, I want to have that here <laughs> in the Quaternion 3D Rotation, Sphere Rotation. And now you see it's, well, it's kind of facing camera. The side of it is facing the camera. So what I'm going to do is take that drawing and in its offset um, rotation, 
I gotta make sure it's 3D so I can rotate it on the Y axis, which is what I need to do. Uh, ba -bum. Isn't this so easy and straightforward? Ta-da! And there it is. Um, I'm going to nudge him over so that, boop, he does live there. And I think I might shrink down just a little more. Boop. And looky there, now we have an object that completely matches a 3D Maya camera. And now to make this official uh, to what I said I was going to do, um, I'm going to draw a poor little guy trapped in the, uh, I need a really small brush, trapped in this sphere. And ta-da, there you have it. You have 3D stuff.